everybody what's going on welcome back to my channel we are back for another hustle and soul review this is season three episode eight minion mayhem um before we get into anything because let me just say off top this episode piss me off thandy and anna y'all on some bullshit y'all are on some bull shit for this but before we get into the ratchetry which is the pink teacup Please make sure to subscribe to my channel, hit the notifications button so you'll be notified whenever I upload new content and content and share this video. Okay, let's just get into the bullshit because, you know, I'm not a fan of cola. I'm not a fan of colas at all, but this episode really made me be on her side. I understand a lot of what the girl is. I understand a lot of her frustrations with Anna and Thandie after this right here. Why she even went back to that bullshit situation, I don't understand. But let's get into the bullshit. It started off on some bullshit. So, so the episode starts off. They're in the pink teacup. They're at the restaurant, right? So the twins are out there on the floor working. They're serving drinks to people. And there's a patron there that wants some water. So instead of them waiting for Cola to get the person something to drink because Cola is serving somebody else behind the bar, one of the twins goes behind the bar and gets some water for the person that wants something to drink. So immediately afterwards, Anna's like, no, 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 ho, twin, come on. Y'all can't go behind the bar. I don't want nobody behind the bar besides the bartender. And they try to explain to Anna, look, there was somebody that wanted something to drink. She's like, no, 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 cut it. I don't care. Nobody behind the bar except for the people that need to be back there. Cole was like, all right, cool. I got it. Nobody behind the bar. Cool. I got it. And that was that. Here come fucking Thandy with her goddamn predator looking ass. What's, what's, what happened? Did y'all forget, forget how to work? Bitch, why are you coming in in the middle of a conversation that ain't got nothing to do with you? Yes, you are the new floor manager, but you ain't the goddamn bar manager. You ain't got shit to do with nothing that's going on behind here. You need to worry about what's going on on the floor and let me worry about what's going on behind the bar. Okay? That's what Cola should have told her goddamn ass. But they started arguing, kind of going back and forth and... You know, Anna came over in the middle and she broke it up. She's like, look here, you know, and it was right in the middle of uh, fucking brunch, lunch, whatever the hell it is. It's people all at the bar. It's people all up in there eating. And Thandy came to Cola with that bullshit. So, no, the arguing in front of people, that was not right. But that wasn't all on Cola. Thandy started that bullshit. So, they start going back and forth and, um... Basically, then it's just trying to call her out. And like I said, she comes over, she breaks it up like, look, we can't do this here. Y'all, you know, Dandy, you going on somewhere. Anna, you going, I mean, um, Cola, you going back over here behind the bar and you take care of your people, right? So Thandy walks away and Anna has the nerve to tell Cola, basically getting on Cola, like you as a bar manager, you need to... Well, no, bitch, really, Dandy as the floor manager, she needs to... Cool, calm, and collect her damn self. Because she had no reason coming over there fucking with Cola. No reason in the first doggone place. So after she tells Cola that, you know, Anna starts, I mean, Anna starts to walk away. And so Cola is apologizing to the people that are at the bar. She's like, yeah, she was saying some slick shit on the cool, but she was like, I apologize. Everybody just ain't got their professionalism together. That's my apologies. For some reason, Anna takes offense to that like she's talking about her. And she ain't talking about your ass, even though you do fit in that category. She's not talking to you on this particular incident. She's talking about Thandy. But again, Anna gonna put that in her back pocket as something that she can use against Cola ass for later. That's that old sneak shit. I can't stand an old sneaky bitch. I swear. Mm. Next up, Cola and the twins, um, and Nikki, they're at the park, they're sitting up talking, whoop de woo and, um, Nikki's explaining to them that she got a court date coming up because, um, you know, she got into a fight with her cousin. Now, apparently, the fight that she got into with her cousin, she said it was some glass being thrown, her cousin got cut worse than she did, her cousin called the police, and they ended up taking her to jail. And because of that, a lot of her family have sided with the cousin, and they're against Nikki. Now... You know, it's always two sides to every story, right? Now, let's just, let's just, let's just say this. What if you and your cousin was fighting, you picked up a bottle, smashed up in the head with it, and you got cut in the hand, she got cut all up in the face, that's why your ass went to jail, that's why you got this court thing coming up. But they all telling Nikki, no, you don't deserve that. You don't deserve to go to jail. Which offhand, meeting the girl, she's, she's so cool. She's so beautiful. She does not have um, a, a, a killer instinct like that, I guess, or whatever. She don't seem like she'd be out there fighting. But you never know. 
You never know. And then again, you got to look at why is all the family taking this cousin side, but everybody's against you. There's always, there's two, three, four different stories, sides to every story, should I say. But um, Nikki's just basically telling them, you know, she got court coming up and hopefully she can fight that little case and she ain't got to go to jail for that. But later on, we find out from that, um, she um, ends up getting some time. Well, not some time for that. We're going to get to that. And an LP there at dinner and... Um, LP tells Anna that he ends up getting an insurance check from the Pink Teacup Brooklyn for $1.4 million uh, insurance settlement because, you know, the roof collapse came in up on that bitch, knocked Dan Sandy up in the head. That's the whole reason why the bitch down here in Miami now, which... Anyway, that's neither here nor there. But he got $1.4 million, and he wants to rebuild the Pink Teacup Brooklyn. And I don't want to do that. She wants to expand. She wants to think global and not local. She wants to go to Atlanta. Now, I've never been to Atlanta, but I'm pretty damn sure they don't need no more soul food restaurants there. Let the old lady gang and Gladys Knight and all of them, Dougie Freshers, whoever, let them have the chicken and waffle game. Glorious, all of that. Let them have that. Because unless you got a certain mix with your chicken and waffles, your shit might taste just like everybody else chicken and waffles. I'm just saying, could be, couldn't be. Or, or if you are, if you do want to go to Georgia, go somewhere where it's not a lot of soul food restaurants. Just don't. I, I'm I'm with Lawrence. I feel like you need to rebuild what your what your staple, your flagship restaurant was in Brooklyn. You can rebuild it, make it bigger and better. You can send Fandy ass goddamn back and you ain't got to deal with that goddamn drama from that. But it would go back where you started from. You know, that's what I think. But Anna wants to go to Atlanta and she's trying to convince him of that idea of going to Atlanta because she's dead set that she wants to open up a restaurant down there. So we're going to see how all of that play out because I don't, I, don't, I don't know how all of that's going to go. We're going to see on that. Thandie and Anna are talking, right? So it's after hours, they're closing or whatever. Um, Th uh, Anna's behind the bar. Thandie comes up and Anna offers her a drink. So she's like, okay, yes, of course. So Thandie proceeds to thank Anna. To thank Anna for bringing her down there. She tells her, you've always been there for me. You've always supported me. You and I were friends. And also, I want to apologize for what happened between Lawrence and I. And then she does go to clarify that her and Lawrence did not cheat when her and him and Anna were not together. Him and Anna had broken up. Him and Fanny had got together, did their thing, and then so forth and so on. So she apologizes to Anna for basically fucking around with her man, which... I mean, Anna, Thandy, y'all both had him. Hmm. Word on the curb is y'all both had him. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't know. I just be looking at what everybody be putting on 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 the blogs and on the what everybody else be saying. Word on the curb. I don't know. I ain't want to gossip. You ain't heard that from me. But she accepts her apology, and as it cuts to Anna's green screen, Anna says, look, I'm accepting her apology. I'm going to do this little toast. I'm going to cheers to her. Because keep in mind, I play chess, not checkers. That's a fucking red sign right there. That means that bitch is up to no goddamn good. But on a side note, Fandy asks as well. It's like, if I was Anna, I wouldn't want Fandy down here in Miami. Because Anna, no, Fandy said that Lawrence is her end game. You don't trust no bitch that says no shit like that. That mean basically, nigga, either you minds or you ain't nobody. Nigga, if I die, you dying too. Or if I'm dead and you alive, nigga, I'm gonna come haunt you in your sleep. Nigga, she crazy. And that's Anna's fault if some shit go down because she bought that crazy bitch up there. That's all on you. I'm ready to see what's gonna go goddamn go down. Hmm. Moving right along from that. Nikki goes with Cola to court, right? Now, <sighs> Nikki in his outfit. Now, bitch, you going to court. She had on Easter pastel pink with blue hair. And then it was a shimmy shimmer see-through dress. It was beautiful. Don't get me wrong. The dress was, was beautiful. Nikki was working it. That's something that you wear on a Friday or a Saturday when you finna go kick it with the girls. Y'all finna go have some lunch or some lunch or some, some happy mimosas or something. You don't wear that shit to court and think anybody gonna take your ass serious? Really? 
Carla explains to her that she can't go up in court with her because she got warrants. Bitch, you lying. You ain't got no damn warrants. Shut up. You ain't got no fucking warrants. That's what she tells her ass why she can't go up at, uh, go up in the courthouse with her. So she tells her she just going to support her from afar. She going to stay out there on the curb. And she going to wait for her to come outside the courtroom. And hopefully she come out. And then she going to hear what happened. I'm going to support you, sis. But I'm going to support you from back here, though. That's what I got to do. Bitch, you ain't got no warrants. Shut up. Stop lying. Anyway, so the twins are at a photo shoot, and finally, Steph tells Dom that he got the offer for a modeling gig in Germany. And Dom pretty much, he, of course, he loses his shit. He starts crying. He did the ugly man cry because he does not want to be separated from his twin brother, which, I mean, I get it. You, 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 y'all have always been together for 28 years. Y'all are conjoined at the hip. I get that. But at the same time, y'all are 28 fucking years old. Y'all are two grown ass men. You need to get your own goddamn identity sooner or later. You can't sit up there and, and be so codependent on one another that you can't have your own identity. And I think it, it looks like Steph wants to actually go, cause he's the only one that takes the shit serious. Dom don't take this goddamn, um, Modeling shit serious. You see how he playing around at all the goddamn photo shoots, missing waves, making motherfuckers miss their goddamn money and time and filming shit, but they didn't pay for this goddamn shit. He don't take that shit serious, but Steph does. And Steph has always wanted to. On another episode, I remember Steph saying that if he ever got the opportunity to go to Germany and to do some modeling in Germany, that he would do that. But of course, you know, Dom is crying and he's upset because he's like, bro, what am I going to do with you, bro? You hate me, right? I mean, come on, bruh. He be dumb if he don't take that opportunity, which I, this is all TV. It's all acting. So, yes, I'm sure he is going to take it because he would be a dumb dodo bird if he didn't take it. But we're going to see how all that plays out. But, yes, later on from that photo shoot, though, um, you know, like I said, um, Dom is all in his feelings. And so later on from that, the twins are talking with Nikki. They're back over at the condo or whatever. They're talking with Nikki. And Nikki's cracking jokes. She's like, um, well, I hope you do go to Germany because shit, I want to go down. I'm trying to find me a good ass German man. Steph gets mad about, I mean, not Steph, Dom. Dom get mad. He get big mad. Get a nigga KP, we super mad. Like he got mad, mad, mad for real about that. But it's like, like he said, you know, he, he's hoping that they're going to grow up. They're going to blow up together. Like he said, we were trying to be Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. Don't be like that bitch. Bitch, be like Mike. Don't be like them old. Like, what? I mean, I get it, the twin reference, but come on now. Like, bruh. Bruh. Come on now. Anika. Oh, fucking Anika. Anika came start the shit. This bitch purposely went to Anna and told Anna that Cola was talking shit. She didn't even tell her specifically what shit she was talking, but all Anna needed to hear was that Cola was talking shit. She took that and she ran with it. That's all she needed to hear. She told her ass, okay, get back to work. We'll deal with that later, blah, 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 blah. But this bitch, Anika, gonna say in her fucking confessional that she does not like Cola and she'll do anything she can to get Cola ass out of there. So I think, yes, she may have heard her saying some shit, but a lot of that shit was made up because she don't like fucking Cola. And so she was trying to do whatever she could to get Cola's goddamn ass in trouble with um, Anna. Bitch, you ain't shit either. Oh, Nika, where they mama them at? Where your mama them at? You ain't shit. Anyways, though, so after court, um, Nikki comes out of court, and so, you know, her and um, Cola are talking. She don't want to tell about what happened in the court as soon as she came out. She's like, bitch, we got to go sit down somewhere. We gotta, bitch, we got to talk. We got to sit down, bitch, because it went down. So they offered her 34 months. They reduced 34 months down to 18 months. Her court-appointed lawyer told her that she should not go to trial because if she goes to trial, then she stands a chance of facing more time. Now, these court-appointed lawyers, I don't know if they get paid to get people to just take deals or if they are really trying to work something out. How they're not, I ain't never been in the court system. Thank hallelujah. Thank you, God. But they don't seem like they be trying to do a whole lot to get a motherfucker off. You know what I'm saying? They trying to do whatever they can do so they can settle that shit and move on to the next. That's just my opinion. I don't know how that works. But she don't know if she wants to take this or not. Because, you know, 18 months is a long got Bitch. That's a long goddamn time. That's a year and a half. Is you crazy? No. 
Not me, not me, not she, no her, no ma'am. But um, she tells Cola that she does not want Anna and LP to know about what's going on. She don't want nobody to go, no, know about what's going on. So she promises her not to say anything. Hopefully, fucking Cola, you keep your fucking mouth closed, bitch. Zip, zip. Don't say nothing like she said. Shut the fuck up. So, Chef LP and Fandy are talking, and um, Fandy is basically telling Chef Lawrence about how you basically brought fucked up staff that was in Brooklyn down here now to Miami. Calling the twins fucked up, calling Cola fucked up, saying she's trash, everybody's trash, nobody's down and supports him and loyal to him the way that she is. Basically, she's just trying to butter this nigga up, because she's just trying to, like I said, she got some shady shit playing with her, so she's just basically trying to butter his ass up so she can get the best of him. You gotta watch that bitch, Dandy Man. You gotta watch that bitch. You gotta watch that bitch. I don't like that hoe no more after that. I don't like that bitch and then this bitch um Fandy gonna have the nerve to say if I gotta bust a bitch in the head uh here and there so she knows to get it together then that that's what it gotta be bitch what excuse me you can't you Lawrence Lawrence get you some fucking human resources up in there and you you got bitches running wow these bitches is wilding out dead ass son you need to do something about this. Because this bitch, between Anna and Fandy, they are going to destroy everything that you've worked hard for. And I ain't even had none of your goddamn chicken and waffles. And I want some of the fucking chicken and waffles. But I ain't gonna get none if your shit gonna be closed down. Because you fucking around here with these two wild banshee ass bitches. Because they going upside hoes heads. Get you some human resources. God damn it. So Cola meets up with Eric. Cola meets up with Eric because Eric wants to talk about John John and his um, excessive drinking. His drinking has picked up since he has had to make the uh, make the decision between going between Cola and Eric. He chose Eric, and so now his drinking has been picking up. And I'm on Cola's side on this. Wait, hold on. He chose you. You his man now, okay? He love you. So, since he's your man, he come with baggage, you need to talk to his ass. You need to be enough to get that motherfucker the help that he goddamn need. Don't call on me, goddamn it. I ain't in the picture no fucking more. And that's the way I was on Cola's side for that. Like, he's wrong and that's selfish of him to even put her in a situation to tell her, like, hey, can you come and talk to him because he's drinking too much, regardless of who he chose in the situation. Can you be there for him? Can you support us? Bitch, what? Fuck you. Fuck him. Fuck y'all's all. No, hell no. No. And he was wrong for that. And I had Cola's back on that. She, he was wrong for that. And like she said, no, I'm going to need some fucking time. You his man. You need to get it together. You supposed to be enough for him. You going to take that nigga and get the motherfucking help he need. Because I can't goddamn do it. Fucking crazy. Lord. So, back at the pink tea cup. Now, the editing on this shit was crazy. Because the beginning... They were, it was, it was one thing, right? But now it's ending, but they still at the beginning though. But the, I say this because the clothes, everything was the same. The, I mean, if, if it was going to be this way, they should have kept the argument going, but they split it up. They started the argument in the beginning and now they got it in and at the end. So, Fanny is just steady fucking with Cola. Fanny is steady fucking with Cola. So, Anna's like, look, Fanny... Cola, I need y'all to come over here, sit down, and we can talk. Nikki, you come over here so I can let you know about what your duties are. No, Thandy can let you know about what your duties are. Everybody can be clear on the situation. But they don't even really talk to Nikki. It's Cola and Anna, I'm sorry, Cola and Thandy going back and forth. So much so to where it only took a little sentence to send Anna off and hit that crazy button that that bitch got. Cola said, you better watch it, Anna. You know she steals everything that you have. From that moment on, it was it was it was a fuck bitch situation. Fuck fuck boy, fuck bitch situation. They jumped this girl. They had no reason to jump Cola. And then for Thandy to get your little micro mini cockroach looking ass, jump over a table and begin to punch this girl. She, and that was completely unwarranted. It was unladylike. It wasn't that wasn't nothing no real bitch would do any doggone way. 
You had this, this girl was sitting down. Luckily, security came and they grabbed Fandy's ass. Then Cola was able to get up. She was holding her own, though. I was proud of you, Cola. You was holding your own, though. Don't get me wrong, not proud that they was fighting, but proud that Cola was holding her own. She did not allow these bitches to jump on her and hold her down. She held her own. But Anna... Use a sneaky bitch. Use a sneaky bitch. You do not have the makings of a real woman. And I feel bad for you. I feel bad for you that you got unwarranted hate in your heart for this girl. For y'all to jump on her. Jumped her for no doggone reason. Just because she's speaking truth. She was speaking facts. Watch out for Thandy because guess what? She wasn't lying. Boo-boo, that's the whole thing, sugar fudge. She wasn't lying. Thandy finna come take... Bitch, she finna be like city girl. She finna take your man, period. Hmm. And on that note, y'all let me know what y'all thought about the episode. This episode had me so goddamn hot. I'm telling you, that had me fucking hot. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe to my channel. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.